as fishermen, we're constantly pounded by the thoughts that we must be using this bait, we must be using that bait. Why? Oh, hang on, as soon as I hear the word must, I tend to get a little bit awkward because I don't like must. How about catching fish or something different? I've done quite a lot of that. Oh no, this one really is a bit different. Check this out for your next bait trip. Oh wow, there's a bigger fish over there. Um... Watch and learn, you youngsters. Right, right. Okay. Oh dear, here he is again, watch, just watch, just watch. Oh sweet, no, 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 no. Well, most people will be packing up and going home after a night session. They're here, totally awesome. We're getting ready for the second session. I've come up to a match lake. There's no match on this one, but there's about 50 cars piling past me behind me, and vans, they got match on the other lake. So it'd probably be a bit noisy. So I've got my polarizing glasses on. I've got my lucky fishing hat on. I've already thrown some floaters out and some bread. And I'm gonna, well, I can see fish are taking it. I'm gonna try and pick off a bigger one if I can. But I think first, rather than feeding the fish, I think I better feed myself and I think I'm going to go for bacon and egg and uh, upset everybody else with the smell because they all want bacon sarnies, won't they? Right, let's get myself organised. Well, hopefully it won't be too noisy for you people, but it is a commercial fishery. What I've done, I've got my cool box. I've got these blue things here. Look, this is, I always take these for overnighters just to keep food cool. I take these because I've got to do bacon and egg. If you see if it's... and it's still an egg intact. There we go, I'm gonna have that. These are plastic things, I think they belong to my mum when she was camping in 1853, but tell you it does the job. I've got a little container full of cooking oil, just to make it sizzle a little bit. I suppose there's no reason I couldn't put that in a bit of ground bait, to be honest. Slick the surface, slick the surface off a little bit. And of course I do have smoked back bacon if I can ever open it always keep the gas low when you're frying because these little propane burners um, do get hot oh no look at that piece of bread that won't last 30 seconds I reckon someone's gonna find it so let they get hot I've also got got my knife and fork got my tweezers Someone's stolen the plate. See, look, that's only low, that's only low, guys. That's getting hot already. I don't want to eat off the top of one of these lids. I've got company already, look at that dog. Dog's not stupid, is he? he can smell that. He smells that bacon all right, for sure. In fact, the safest place for that is in there. A dog and bacon. I can see fish bow waving. You see him bow waving over there? So what I'm doing is having something to eat first because I'm pretty sure if I even put one bait on the line, I'm not going to be able to eat anything. And I've been all night at just it's like quarter past one and I haven't had anything since this morning. I'm just continually feeding them with a little bit of bread like this, just flake, just crumbled up this flake. Leave it out there. Wait till the smell of this goes over those matchmen. That's going to drive them mad. I already attracted the little dog. I know where he's gone. Wait till he gets that smell of that lovely bit of bacon. Oh my god, the bread's on the move already. The bread is on the move already. Good job I started to eat first. What I was going to do was fish over by those rushes the same as I did the other lake, but I see no reason to because I've got fish going literally bonkers in front of me. What I don't understand, people are fishing the pole on the bottom here and all the fish are on the top. I've never understood that. I know they want to catch bream and stuff like that, but 
they're, they're basically fighting over this bread and I know, I know I'm going to catch some of it. Definitely for you guys. That's the ultimate setting. Frying bacon and carp in the background. Look, 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 there you go. Could you want anything else? The trouble is we have so much water in our bacon. As you can see here, it just, you're basically boiling the bacon in its own juice. Oh God, there's the wind. Is it still going? Yes. I think the wind will come up, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get dindins out of the way. Oh God, look at them. Yes, look at this. Terrible, isn't it? I've just done pretty well 24 hour session and I'm now on to my second session. Oh, he's even broken the egg. Oh my God. Oh my god, he's broken the egg. I'm going to catch a fish straight down there in front of me in a minute. Always turn it off, let it cool down. I'm going to eat it straight out of the pan. Always this is some kind of tasty. But the thing is, I've come up and put these little bits here, not because I'm a naughty boy and won't eat them. Some of you are going, I know what he's going to do with those. I know, I know what he's going to do with those. I've seen his famous film, Catching Carp on a Full Roast Beef Dinner. I'm going to try and catch carp. Wait for this on breakfast. There it is. Mm. I'm going to try and catch them on bacon and eggs. That'd be something, wouldn't it? Go and tell all these matchmen they need a good. Uh, what's the best bait? Is it maggots or is it worms? No, it's a fry up. Time for a quick brew before I take action stations. Also, possibly before the milk goes off. I've dropped some balls of ground bait just down here, tiny, tiny bits. So although I want to get the fish on the top, they are just mudding it and stirring it just off the edge of that um, pontoon bit, the staging as it were, maximum staging. Right, cup of tea and I feel what's left in the, in the stock here. One of these lemon muffins, that leaves me one spare for the drive home to a couple of hours, not really a couple of hours. Unhealthy eating, but that's what you do when you go fishing. Yeah, they probably eat lemon. I've got to try my lemon muffin cake. I know really they should have the bacon and eggs first and then the dessert, but watch. I wonder if the lemon will put them off. What do you think, guys? Nothing's touching it. Um, not sure he took it, that one there. Uh, oh dear. They like lemon muffin cake. What will I think? A bacon and eggs. Let's have this tea first. Cheers, people. What a filthy cup, Graham. That is shocking. Drink from the other side, you don't know who's been drinking out of it. Put your tramp in the hedge. Hmm. There's a better fish I've just seen with my polarizing glasses. It has to be six, seven pounds. Okay, so I've moved the chair closer to the platform. I'm not on the platform, which for, unfortunately for me, out of all these platforms along here and all around the lake and everywhere, is called, yes, some of you might have guessed it's number 69. Most uh, unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Here is my bacon and eggs. I'm just waiting for the occupants of the lake to discover those pieces of bread, and I will try them first with a piece of bacon, I believe. This will sink, I don't know, because it's got fat in it. So I've caught barbel on it, ledger on the bottom. But I haven't done sort of surface fishing with bacon fat for some time. Oh, yuck. And that's why. That's why I haven't done it. There is quite a nice fish. Here comes the bacon fat. It's on his nose. I'm going to drag it right there. And he has scoffed it. Uh, bacon and eggs to be tested, bacon's tested, and they do like a piece of bacon fat. He's just spooling me out. Oh dear. Well, I think I should be 
in with the chance if I win in this match. Oh, you haven't got much bait. Oh. Look at this, there's another one eating bits of bread down there while we're at it. Bacon and eggs, oh, you've got to laugh. I know I'm going to catch on that egg for sure. I caught <clears throat> barble on bacon years ago, ledgering. So obviously it's going to work, you'd think, for the carp. How many of people have caught on their breakfast? It's not a bad fish, it's, I can just go, might go five pounds. He's going to go again, so I just come back on the drag a tad. Oh, look at this. Oh, look, oh, look, look, look. Oh, it's a bonefish. It's a bonefish. That was some run, wasn't it? All those matchmen are just waiting, thinking, how the hell what, am I going to catch fish on bacon and eggs? Well, the old sailor we use here at Totally Awesome Fishing Show, there's anglers and there's danglers. They probably think they're being pegged in the wrong lake. Like, there is tons of fish in here. I mean, if you're a beginner and want to learn about carp fishing, some of the match lakes on any fishery, not just Todd, but any fishery, are always worth trying. Come on, buddy. He won't roll over this one, will he? Oh, no, he's, he's a decent size. We'll be taking that one for sure. Or not. Or, or not at the moment, Graham. is some scrapper, holy cow. Now obviously he's, <clears throat> he's messed up all the fishing for the other guys, but I think I can ch chum them back up with the bread again. I was gonna put the uh, bolt rig over by those rushes. Where am I catching them down there? Just see how things change, you need to adapt. You don't need to uh, be using a bolt rig. I have on the end here a bare hook. Oh yeah, I can see when I said to the wife I'll be back early afternoon, I think not. Not that it's going to be good action. Man, I like this fish. This is on a carp rod, guys. It's not on my old crusty haven. That's not a bad fish. Got that sort of ghosty look about him. He's in. Let's take a look at him on the map. Well, well, well. You carpy people tell me, I'm calling that a ghost. Got that little blue round the eye as well. Nice fin. Nice tail. Fish gonna go mad. No, he's gonna go. He's gonna go the other side of six pounds. Beautiful colours on that. Look at it, beautiful colours. Six and a half pounds. Right, I'm gonna chum them up with a bit of bread. Loose flaky bits. And it will, after all that commotion, take him a while to come back up. Probably, <laughs> probably 45 seconds. But I can't throw it too far out because now I'm gonna try the egg. And the egg, as you can see, or know, is very soft. Now, some children, probably mine included when they're younger, some didn't like the white, some didn't like the yolk. So we'll see what the carp like. We'll try the white first. Man, it's going to be hard keeping it on the hook. It's got to just hang there. I've got to pick the right fish for this one. That's a nice looker. There's the egg. I've missed him. He's going back for that piece of bread. I'll wait till that one over there comes around again. That's a decent fish. I had my chance and I missed it. I might just get one shot at this with the egg. Oh wow, that's a bigger fish over there. I think if everything sinks, I'll be able to touch ledger with a line across my fingers and actually feel them take the bait. But I'd like to be able to see the fish cruising. There's a cruiser. I'm gonna drag it across the surface slowly. There's a nice fish. No, that's a small one, don't want him. There's the egg, there's the egg, there's the egg. You guys seeing this, the eggs there, I'm trying to hold it up with the rod. No, I need to chum them with bread. Oh, it's a big fish. Oh, 
I missed him. I missed him at Smith's fault. Clean me off the hook. Polish that egg off quickly. So soft. <laughs> I think I need to cook it more. Okay. I think what I need to do is put a little bit of bread out closer in so I can actually see the size of the fish. And what I'm doing, unfortunately, is getting keener and keener and pushing the fish further out. I'm stretching. I'm waiting for the tug. I'm going to hold the line across my fingers. It's sinking, the egg's sinking. I reckon they've got it off, boys. No, they haven't. Oh, he turned off that egg. That's interesting. That is very interesting. He definitely nosed it and turned off it. Wow, he's egg a no-no. Yeah, second, oh, I missed him. I'm not sure he, I'm not sure he actually nosed away from that. So there must be something about the egg they're not sure on. I suppose I could lose my temper and actually get out there and hit them with a frying pan. Let's try. I haven't got many more bits to try with. I need to see an individual cruiser on the surface. I'm going to spray a bit more bread closer in. Just see if I can lower on one. Oh, that's a nice fish, that's a nice fish, come on. Come on, baby. I've lost him again. Oh! He took it in. Got him. Eggs on, boys, the eggs on. Well, the white of the egg, anyway. So all you naughty children who don't eat the white of their eggs, you should do because the carp do. Wow, he, he took it on the drop. Oh, that's a decent fish. I'll approach you with either bacon fat or lemon muffin. That's a nice looking mirror. Oh dear, hold on. What was I doing on that other lake? All those hours and hours. Come on, bub. Come on, bub. Put in this one. You know, you think these are two or three pounds, they're, they're not actually. They're fives and sixes and bigger. They're much bigger than I thought they were. Some of them are small, obviously. This one might ping off, but at least you did, uh, did see the hook up. There he comes. He's in, he's in, he's in. It's Matt time for you, buddy. Come meet my friend, Matt. This one's about seven, eight pounds. And he spat the hook out, I think. Yeah, hook's out. Look at this one. That is a fat one, is it not? Hook's in the net, I think. Yeah, there's a hook. Let's see if it'll hold. Let's see, get the size of it. That's a lot, that's the best part of eight pounds. Now, in my experience of at least the last five minutes, I think they, they definitely, a couple of them seem to spit that out. Now let's see if they like the yellow, the yellow of the egg. We don't need to prove they can be caught on. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice fish there, that's a six or seven. We know they can be caught on uh, egg, but will they take the white of the egg or do they only want the yellow of the egg? I'm trying to pick out a light kind of one and he's right there, there. He's swimming fast. I wonder if we'll go in a circle. A bit of a tangle there. No chum, no fun. Oh. It would sink and I'd probably get them on the drop, but I want to see the fish. <gasps> right next to it. Right 
right next to it, guys, right next to it. <gasps> I'm tweaked it, but I want that one. No, more bread. Just got to be able to target your, target your fish. Um, the yolk works quite well, I have to say. Oopsie. I am actually not just fishing, I am targeting the slightly larger ones. Of course, you can do this, you can do this all day long target the bigger fish. What I do find is you feed really heavily, you get lots of small ones, it disturbs the surface too much, and even with polarizing glasses you can't exactly see what the size is you're catching. Whereas I'm sort of aiming for five, six, seven, eight pluses. Well what's next? We've done bacon, we've got a bit of uh, lemon muffin to go. I'll switch this off till I get it closer. Oh he's not having it. He's not having it. He's not having it, people. Yes, sir. Oh, it's a nice fish in here. It's, not, it's been a couple of years since I've fished here, I think. They've put a lot of weight on. <sighs> I imagine the first carp at Tobba ever caught on the yellow or yolk of an egg. Funny shape, this one. Common. Lovely blue eye there. Look at that lo lovely colour in the eye there. Let's get him back. Now, a bit of a different technique here, guys. I'm going to have to touch ledger with the uh, lemon muffin. And let's I can get them chummed on the top again. It's got to be very close. Get them up on the surface. I can, I can see what's going on. Just got to let them have a, a bit of confidence. Okay, I've had to squeeze it on the hook, the cake. Bit of line to us there. Okay, man, that is one greedy carp. Oh, I missed him. Oh my god, I've only got one piece left. No. Let's get the frying pan back again. Look, guys. <laughs> I wonder if I cut it in half. Just saw it lightly. What a light to have it. On the surface. Listen, beggars can't be choosers. Oh, there's a carp. You've got to get them in a second. Come on, babe. Come as he gets waterlogged. Here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. Oh, two I've missed on the lemon cake. Two I've missed on the lemon cake. I I think it may be, although we, we know they take it, it may just be too soft for them. A little bit of a teaser. You need to drop, and this goes for floater fishing in general, to be honest. You need to get it in their face pretty quickly. Guys, I failed miserably on the lemon cake. I've got none left. All I've got is a monstrous piece of bacon which I cannot see them taking at all. Except this big white white one here. Nope, he turned off it. They're not sure on the old giant piece of bacon. 
<laughs> he came off a moment ago. He took it. You've got a laugh, have you? You have got a laugh. Look at this piece. This has got to get a big piece. A uh, big cart, this one. Try and catch one on the drop. Out there. And watch the line tweak. It's sinking and sinking and sinking. And they're probably thinking, what the hell flavour is this? They like it on the top. They like it just, just barely on the top. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. I've no idea whether it's a big one. Probably not. But hopefully, you've got the action there. They've got the action there. That's what it's all about. Fun fishing. Fun fishing at Tobba Manor. And it's actually a little wincy burger. Little small one. Little small one. There you go. The biggest piece of bait. Biggest piece of bacon. And the smallest carp I've had so far. Let's crank him in. Crank him in. Little mirror. Little mirror. In he comes. Now what I have got, probably showed you these before. These are a large size dog biscuit there. Very, very, very hard. Very squeezy and hard. They can crush them up. Don't even think I can break one open for you. Because I've left them in here to totally dry out. They're just a biscuit, almost like a boilie. But you can get them in packs of dog biscuits with those, with all mixed up sizes and you just have to go through them all a bit laboriously and get some of these out. But they are good, especially for bigger carp. And uh, tiny little fish can't nibble it or knock it off the hook. I'm going to side hook one of these, a dog biscuit, and then see if they'll take that for dessert. Okay, I'll chuck some, some bread over there. Now this one I can move around because it's um, much, much firmer. And I've just side hooked it. Just waiting to see if there's a decent sized one coming up. Man, he just mowed down three bits of... Oh, look, 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 bosh. Cannot believe he didn't take that. He took three in a row. Dog biscuits work as well, people. Wasps are going to nail me in a minute. That'll be some fun to shove off out of it. I am told they do get uh, attracted by cooked cooked bacon. Oh, oh, oh my God. Hang on a minute. Just check that drag's a little bit lighter. It's a nice looking mirror. This is a nice looking mirror, people. Not be too hasty here. I didn't have him down as big as that, I've got to be honest. Anybody else notice that the mirrors don't fight quite as hard as the commons? Let's check this puppy out. Get him on the mat, come and meet Matt. There we go, people. Can't hold him too long. He's a nutter. This one, complete nutter, complete fruitcake. Get him straight back. He'll try and put the camera up higher and get a take on the camera. Let's move it round right about there. Hopefully, it's not going to fall in the water, which I don't need. Let's see if I can get something on one of those giant dog biscuits for you. My oh, goodness me, we've had a few carp already. You can see one taking a... There's a nice carp there, just drifting out on the outside. No, not those. There was one good one there. Where the hell has he gone? Sometimes they actually like coming to the sound of the vat going in the water. They actually do. Sometimes you get attracted by that. Now that one took that... Uh, Biscuit quite tentatively. See, he's quite nervous. It's because they're a hard biscuit and he's been used to taking, no, not bacon and eggs, he's been used to taking soft stuff like soft bread. There's a big one over there, that's worth a throw. 
That's either one fish or is that two together? And if you get that over there, guys, we're way in the distance, way in the distance. For this one, I've got to go. I can see him right over the back there. I can just target him. He's gone back the other way. A cheeky monkey. He's turned again. That's on the money. He's seen that. He's seen it. And he's looking at it. He's turning around. Others are taking it. Very, very wary out there. Very wary. Missed him. I'll try some bread down there. Quite tough pieces of crust there. Couple of decent fish out at distance. Piece of good old fashioned bread crust going out, it's quite hard, so I'll give it just like one or two daps like this just to soak it, but it's not going to cast particularly accurately. It's well out there. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on at distance. Um, yes, I've got another customer here I'm gonna show you. There we go, say the best till last, guys. Well, well, to be honest, I'm getting pretty exhausted now. Need three o'clock, I think I've gotta draw a line somewhere. One final tip I wanna show you, and I've said this many times before, if you're starting to run out of bait, and you've only got ground bait left, you can make a little paste out of it, but also, Never neglect where people bang out, especially on these match complexes. Most of the guys just bang their bait out or throw it in the margins. And around about three to five, when a lot of matches finish, finishing, you can find these fish will know when that match finishes and they're coming close. Now I'm going to put a couple of balls of ground bait, look guys, down the corner, absolutely in the corner there, to show you this. And they should colour it all up. And if I've got time, I'll just try and make you a little bit of paste up in this. Um, chuck that boil in, they can have that as well. And so I don't give you anything. If I can make a little bit of paste out of this ground bait, then I'm going to try and uh, catch one for you, show you how close you can actually catch those carp. Indeed, any fish, but mostly, mostly carp on a commercial water. So squeeze the ground bait quite hard, like this, so they've got to chew to break it up. You know, they've got to root and dig around, and that'll give you a better bite indication. I'm only going to put two balls down there, because I know the carp are in there, just squeeze it up. Look, look where I'm putting it, people. Watch and learn, you youngsters. Right, right. Okay. Now, that won't take them long. In fact, I'm not even sure they're not even ran out straight away. See the bits popping up off it? Some will come up, taking it off the surface. But what will happen is that will spread, and that will go brown. That will colour up with the mud where they're digging on the bottom. So we'll just... Just give them a little minute to get hold of that. I'll damp up some of this ground bit here and try and make a little bit of paste for you. So you get yourself a ball like this, and what you do is you just wet your hands. If it's a bit, bit, little bit dry, don't over wet it, you wet your hands, and that's enough to keep moulding it like this until it bonds, to, it bonds together like putty. Just keep working it, and if it starts to dry out, damp your hands, don't wet the ground bait, just damp your hands. Keep pushing it and moulding it like this. I can tell you those carp are already down there because I can see by the swirls of the ground bait on the surface that something is down there digging. Look, look, look. Just there, just there, boys. Watch and learn, you youngsters. You don't need to be casting to the far side of the bank. And if you hook with just a free line bait down there, you hook a double figure fish. Man alive, you've got the best fight you can ever have. He is going to crank off. Make sure your drag is set properly to give line. I think that's about right. Now you can touch ledger, 
or you can even use look something like this something like this as a piece of marker just where the line goes in into the water just half hitch that on there should you want to uh, have a float let's put a piece on there put it on the hook this is our last tip of the day from totally awesome then I really must go home with a monstrous horrible job list aggravation all that stuff we all get when we get home it's just a way of the world I'm afraid now all that there has been stirred up and you can actually see it moving look can you see that swirling around well that's not caused by wind that's called by the vortex of fish's tail swirling around in there so all I'm going to do is get a piece of my paste bait I'll be very quiet because they're only just literally over the side there piece of paste bait I've already got a piece there I'm just going to push my hook in it but well, you can see that I've just left the point showing I just left the point showing what you can do let me get myself a bit more line Oh, I just see the tail flash down there. I've lost my float now. Let's say it's that. You can half hitch a piece of grass. Something soft is good really, something that does obviously float. This is for kids. It's a good bit of fun this is, I tell you. And that will give you a bright indication if you're not used to touch ledgering. I'm actually so close guys, I've got to get back. I'm lowering the bait there now. I can see the piece of grass. I've got my fingers holding it as well to touch ledger. That piece of grass is... Some of these tips, old school tips, are they good or are they good? I mean, <laughs> that was there, that was there guys. It's right there, a piece of grass for float, dead grass, or rush them. Well, done a lot of fishing like that, and you don't need all that fancy gear. It does work, obviously, occasionally, but when you get commercial waters that heavily fish, especially, especially match waters, because as I say, the bait is all knocked out at the end of the day just there it's not thrown out here it's just i've watched them just bang it out and throw it in the side the fish notice and late in the afternoon is the time to go fishing for them i'm going to say this now boys while we're fighting this fish thanks for watching the totally awesome fishing show and indeed it is it's turned into a totally awesome fishing session that's a good fish up to 19.4 was it 17s Plenty of tips in there, a bit of night fishing, a bit of day fishing, a bit of fun fishing like this. And don't forget to watch Mike's TA Outdoors, hit the subscribe button on both channels. And get in there my son, it's only a little one, but don't forget to hit the little, stop that, I'm talking. Don't forget to hit that subscribe bell or notification bell so you know exactly when our films are coming out. I know. I should have entered myself in that match. Only a little one, a little feisty chappy, but they all turn into big ones. We'll see you next time, and this guy might even be starring on one of the shows in the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. See you next time. This is the last cast, guys. Another tip, if you're freelining out there, don't forget, although they're coming up on the surface, they will also take baits on the drop. If you squeeze that paste like this, slightly flat, it sinks slower and you have more chance to take the bait. So even though you're chumming fish up to the surface, very often, let's squeeze it out there. And you'll see, if I squeeze a piece of paste bait flat like this, and very often the fish will take it slightly deeper as well, you know, they'll be laying deeper. 
all you've got to do is touch ledger and you should feel the take as it sinks through the water. Just keep in touch with it. Um, sometimes the bigger ones sometimes the bigger ones are actually slightly deeper. Man, I'm gonna go and have to have a lay down. There's just too many tips today. I've given away. I've given it all away. Oh, ping. There you go. Lost fish, but you can see it works. Now, you know I lied, guys. You know I lied. That was the last cast, but I lost the fish, so it don't count. Here we are again. Let it sink. Touch ledger like this. Feeling for the tug. You guys aren't gonna see it. It's me that's gonna feel it right across my fingers here. It's like a tap. That's all it is, is a tap. Now, sometimes it sinks to the bottom. Sometimes I take it on the bottom another time. I just wind slowly to keep contact with it. It bumps it along the bottom and you're gonna take that way. But more often than not, with that amount of fish on the surface moving, if you just get out in the middle of them, hold your rod fairly high, and try to get used to doing like your hand is like there with my finger across it. it just gives you more sensitivity for feeling the bite. Missed him. Guys, I don't think you can see this down here. There's actually tails of fish. Tails of fish coming right up here in about a foot of water. I might even get them right in there on a piece of bread. They've got their heads down at the moment. Let's leave that down there while I fish outside. God, I've just put the rod, I just put the rod down. That feels like a foul look fish to me. That feels like a foul look fish. No, it's not. All right, I'll bring this off. Now, all the action I'm getting, a lot of this, other than the bacon and eggs, you can get, look, this was just, a regular split tin loaf, which is uncut. Split tin loaf, all right, one pound of 10p. Reduced, what's one pound of 10p? Reduced, what's one pound of 10p? Now, right, 28 pence. 28 pence by just going to the supermarket and finding that counter where stuff starts to go out of date and they get rid of it cheap. Because bread is bread is bread. I've already had sandwiches for this, to be honest. Another tip. You can do, you can break out by hand, but you'll find if you use a pair of scissors, you get a much cleaner edge, and therefore you don't waste so much, so you get more squares out of each piece of bread. Just a little tip, if you cut them up, it's much neater, and of course they are then symmetrical, so each one should cast pretty much the same. You can cast them dry, not very hard, or you can soak them, you know, just dip them, give them a bit of weight. Any bits like that, that are odd, I just throw them in anyway, cut them up first. So, another totally awesome tip for you. There's that much bread in there now, they think I'm a bakery. Oh, there's a nice fish, there's a nice fish, there's a nice fish, there's a nice fish, he's coming in. I don't want to move because I know fish don't like vibration and or movement. People look where he's coming. Oh, he saw me move, he saw me move. This was the last cast that I had some 20 minutes ago. There he is again, watch, just watch, just watch. Oh, sweet, look, 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 look. Oh, two good ones, but I've got to soak that first out of their, out of their uh, vision. Now he's coming back in, there he is, there he is. No, that's a small one. So what I do is check my drag, and I'm waiting until I see the fish I want, the size of the fish I want. Now he might come back, he might not. Scanning, scanning all the time. Let's bring it off, oh he comes, there's come one, so you can see the wake it makes. That's a pretty good one over there. Let's stand up for that one. 
Is he going to come back? Oh, no, I've missed him. And what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to... I've got these chummed up pretty well. I'm going to break some of this hard bread up. Throw it very close and I'm going to try and hold the camera over the top. So you can get to see some of these takes. So you can see how slow and how fast they actually mouth the bait. Right, about there. Let's get the camera set up. I hope I've got enough to get over the top here. Because it really would be quite interesting for you. If I can just... I'm going to use the rushes as a bit of a screen. And I'm hoping you can see these fish. And come back, let's get this little diff different angle on it. You might see the camera here because I've got it really I'm about three feet away from her. Some of these six, seven pound fish. I've stretched out pretty well as far as I can get. Well that light ghosty colour one there. He's just nervous of the camera. Oh, there he comes. I to watch that lead. One piece to go guys. Here he comes, gone. Well, there we go, guys and gals. I can't do any more than catch fish to camera. With the cameras running, I don't hook up. Listen, fish do, at some stage or other, eat virtually anything. They use eggs when they used to make boilies years ago. We all used to use, I'm talking in the 60s, late 60s, Bacon rind for barbel. I'm not sure about like lemon meringue cake and stuff like that, but I have caught trout on currant cake. Honestly, no word of a lie. And the late Dick Walker actually caught trout on a cigarette end. I think he called it Fagus vulgar Vulgaris or something like that. Anybody out there remember that? I'm probably the last one to remember old Dick Walker. I had letters from him, he used to correspond backwards and forwards. Anyway, there you go. Try something different. Leave all your options open. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for us to tell you awesome fishing show. Hit those buttons. TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. And the notification bell so you know when films come up. I'm cranking them out. Trying to keep everybody through lockdown at the moment. Keep a little bit of interest there. And that was a new film. There's a lot more to come. See you next time.